we've got a remarkable woman with us, Michelle Zahner. Yes, we do. She's the author behind the New York Times best-selling Crying in H Mart. More than 750,000 copies sold. Her band Japanese Breakfast is absolutely crushing it. They were just nominated for two Count them Grammys. And if that is not enough, she was named one of Time Magazine's most influential people. Michelle, good morning. Good Hi, morning. Michelle. You had it all going on. And here, your book, Crying in H Mart, was such a sensation during the pandemic. But it was during the pandemic, so you didn't get to do a book tour and all that. You're going to get to do that now. Yes, I'm very excited, especially being a musician. I'm I'm quite used to the touring life, but I am really looking forward to not having to lift an 80-pound amp and just showing up <laughs> with, like, a little tote bag and a book. Oh, it's so exciting. And so it's coming out in paperback. That's yeah, next week. Next okay. week, yeah, yeah, day before my birthday. Tell people who don't know about Crying in HMR what inspired the story. Um, I lost my mother in 2014 to a very short uh, six-month battle to cancer. And um, I'm half Korean, and my mother is Korean, and I spent a lot of my childhood visiting Korea when I was younger. And suddenly I sort of felt like that part of my identity was kind of at risk, and it was a, a sort of different process of grieving. And I found myself uh, in a Korean grocery store in an H Mart crying, and I just was like, why are you doing that? Mm -hmm. And so this book is sort of an exploration of, of, of why, uh, all of the reasons why I found myself sort of crying in an, in an Asian supermarket. Then you talk about how complex your relationship with your mom was because on the one hand she expected so much of you but then you were in in the arts you wanted to be a singer and in a band and she wasn't sure is that really what you should do yeah what do you think she'd be thinking right about now Michelle's honor um I always say that my mom would say where's my handbag <laughs> um, <laughs> buy me a fancy handbag exactly yeah, yeah. Yeah, after all the success that you found like you owe your mom a fancy designer handbag. fair <laughs> you wrote the book before the pandemic uh, Jubilee, the album, too, I think, was done before the pandemic. Yeah. But you had the daunting task of having to promote both those things. You didn't really get a chance to do a proper book tour. You're going to do that now. And I wondered, with so much time going by, what what's the reaction you get from fans? Are they fans of the band? Are they people like me who just came up to you to talk about my gr or grieving a loss of a parent? Yeah. Yeah. What sort of reaction do you get? Um, you know, it's it's across the board. Some people know me as a music. My favorite thing is is somehow finding out that people didn't know that I was a musician at all and that they actually knew my music and, and didn't find out until the sort of last chapter. So I knew the bands and even the punk yeah, rock band you were yeah, in before. Yeah. I didn't know the book. Um, yeah, it's it's really great to, to get a, a whole breadth of um, different people coming to the book or coming to the music and, and finding that marriage. But um, my favorite response to the book is uh, after I read it, I, I called my mom. And mm. I feel like that's the best thing that mm. you can hope from, from making something like this. Speaking of marriage, good segue, right? <laughs> you did just get married recently. Um, I got married eight years ago. Oh, but, eight years ago. <laughs> but yeah, I guess my research. <laughs> but the story um, of how you and Peter got married is incredible. Yeah. Um, it was in your band. It's in, it's in the book. And um, yeah, we had been dating for a year and a half. And once my mom got sick and, and things were looking very dark, we wanted to sort of... Um, have some lightness enter our lives and so we planned our wedding in, in three weeks so my mom could be there mm. and we were married in my parents backyard and uh, my mom passed away two two weeks after we were married and mm. so I when I wrote this story thought that was like such a unique uh, singular experience and actually I've learned that so many people try to have that kind of event so that their parents can be there and, right. and have this sort of simultaneous celebration of love and life and yeah that was a big big part of our story. Wow. You also have a great story about uh, she worked as a, in, a, in a coat check oh, in yeah. a, at a theater oh, yeah. Yeah. in Pennsylvania, just, you know, trying to make a buck. And it's full, certainly come full circle. Tell us, tell us that. Yeah. Um, so when I was a sort of uh, floundering musician at, at 24, I worked at a, a Philadelphia venue called Union Transfer. I worked at the coat check. And um, I once took a fake, uh, I took a counterfeit $100 bill and I had to pay the manager back. Um, and, you know, it was a lot of money. It was like my, you know, way more than what I made on that shift. And, and the owner of the venue actually stepped in and was like, I got you. Here's $100. Aww. And then five years later, we sold out five, no five nights at Union Transfer as a band. So and cool. I called uh, Sean Agnew back up on stage and I was like, here's, here's your $100 oh, that's bill. That's so awesome. And then he went up to me and was like, come out into the lobby. And they 
they had painted Michelle's Honors coat check at the, top of the, oh, wow. at the top of the uh, coat check. So yeah, now now I have my own coat check, which feels very special. That's pretty awesome. Michelle, thank you That's so incredible. much. By the way, that was my mistake, not a yeah. researcher's mistake. You're also going, Michelle, you're also going to, for book number two, you're going to move to Korea for one full year, learn the language and write about it? Yeah, yeah. Are you excited for that? Uh, I'm very scared and, and very excited. Um, but yeah, I'm, I've, my mom always used to say, if you live in Korea for a year, I, I really believe that that sort of immersion will allow you to leave fluent in the language. Right. And so it feels like a really natural jumping off point right. to go We there. can't wait to so read it. To can't wait to hear it. It's the Crying Age Mart. It's going to be a yeah. TV show, too. That's right. A movie. Hey, thanks for watching. Don't miss the Today Show every weekday at 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 Pacific, on our streaming channel, Today All Day. To watch, head to today.com slash all day, or click the link right here.